On March 31st, 574 men gathered in St. Paul's Church in Frankfurt in the so-called Vorparlament or Pre-Parliament under the presidency of a moderate liberal politician by the name of Karl Josef Anton Mittermeier. Under the watchful eyes of Germania, a personification of the German nation, they had been tasked with the preparation of a proper national assembly. But already there was a division among the revolutionary forces. While the liberal forces led by Heinrich von Gagan and Friedrich Daniel Bassermann wanted to keep the revolution within the legal framework of the German Confederation, radical Democrats like Friedrich Hecker and Gustav Struve wanted to keep the pre-parliament as a permanent revolutionary institution and turn Germany into a proper republic. However, the democratic forces were outvoted by the liberals. Both Hacker and Struve suffered another personal and political defeat when neither of them were voted into the committee tasked to work with the federal convention during the transitional phase until a proper national parliament would assemble. Hacker returned to his home in Baden with the intention to further his revolutionary goals outside of parliament. On April 11th, Hacker arrived in the southern German city of Konstanz where he planned to gather public support march on Karlsruhe and dethrone Leopold, the Grand Duke of Baden. As he marched across the countryside, he gathered moderate public support. But on April 20th, Hecker was cornered by federal troops in Kandan, far to the southwest of Hecker's original destination of Karlsruhe. By then, his forces had grown to 1,000 men, including the entire militia of the city of Singen am Hohentwil. But now, they were pitched against 2,000 soldiers from Hesse and Baden, who were better armed and better trained. In the following battle, Hacker's militia was utterly defeated, despite the death of the federal commander, Friedrich von Gagan, a brother of Hacker's political adversary Heinrich von Gagan. Hacker escaped alive and went into exile, first to Switzerland and later to the United States. Hacker's efforts failed, but they were not without effect. His uprising garnered sympathies for democratic ideas in Baden. Songs were written about him and were subsequently banned by the government. On May 18th, the National Assembly, the first elected German parliament ever, held its first meeting. In early April, the federal convention had passed a voting law allowing every German of full age the right to vote, though the execution of said law varied from state to state. Like the pre-parliament, the National Assembly gathered in St. Paul's Church in Frankfurt. Months of heated debate about the constitution of a new German nation were about to begin. One of the major points of contention was whether Austria should be part of the new German Empire. With the formation of the Frankfurt Parliament, it looked like things were about to settle down. However, in September, Riots broke out in Frankfurt as a form of protest against a ceasefire between Prussia and Denmark, which was supposed to bring the conflict in Schleswig to an end. After rioters murdered the conservative members of the National Assembly, Felix von Lichnowski and Hans von Auerswald, and erected barricades in the inner city, the revolt was crushed by federal troops from Prussia and Austria. A few days later, on September 21st, Gustav Struve appeared in the Badense city of Lörrach, where he hoisted the flag of the revolution and proclaimed the German Republic. Determined to succeed where Hecker had failed, Struve gathered 4,000 men and marched on Karlsruhe. However, like Hecker, he was stopped by federal troops. After a crushing defeat, Struve was taken prisoner and tried for high treason. In early October, Austrian troops were about to leave for Hungary to suppress the revolution there. A crowd sympathetic to the Hungarian cause tried to prevent them from leaving, leading to violent fighting in the streets and the murder of the Austrian minister of war. Emperor Ferdinand I fled the riots and sought refuge in the city of Olmütz, roughly 130 miles northeast of Vienna. This time, the empire cracked down on the uprising. On October 26th, Austrian troops started the bombardment of Vienna. On October 31st, the imperial forces stormed the city, 
where they captured and promptly executed almost all of the revolutionary leaders. Among them was Robert Blum, a member of the National Assembly and former vice president of the pre-parliament. After an official visit on behalf of the German parliament, he had decided to stay in Vienna to lead the Viennese in the fight. The counter-revolution had begun.